Hi, everyone. I'm Tracy. I'm Carol. And we are my Outlander Purgatory. Welcome. What is that? No, that was you're the, never, we're never. That voice was the same one you use when you're like imitating Tobias Menzies. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. My husband always says, Tobias. <laughs> Purg Purg Remember, we wanted to get him to say Purgatory. And I said he's going to say Purgatory. 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 Um, Carol, I've, since we see your little drink, what are Open you? 18. The same thing as um, yeah. weeks past. I'm drinking this, um, let me see here. This is the Angeline Pinot Noir that we had actually bought to serve at Thanksgiving and opened the bottle and no one drank it. So, yes. My family didn't, you know, they would rather, my, my mom, my mom is the red wine drinker of the family and she would rather the like, you know, um, Bartle and James smart. <laughs> That's not true, Tracy. It's Carlo and Rossi. Oh, sorry. I knew it was two guys. <laughs> How do you think I got so rich? So, um, you know, someone has to drink it, so I, I'm doing it. I like red wine. I just, I just, I don't know. I like red wine, especially when it's cold out in the winter. Um, the problem with drinking it in, during the video is an hour and a half in, and I look like Bozo the Clown. With like, Me you know, too. There's red They're everywhere. Asia. Between the red like of the wine and then the you know yeah. red, and the red of the wine and the red of the rosacea. Yeah. Yes, I yeah. live it. No. Yes, I know. It's not good. I um, will start having white around here, <laughs> like our president. <laughs> oh, oh, I was just gonna say it. Oh. I'm telling you right now. Oh my god, I was just gonna say it, and then I was like, we should talk politics. Have you ever seen his chin? My chin, I hate to say it, up close. It looks it's capillaries. He has no, Carol. Up. He has tanning booth Asia. <laughs> well, I use tanning low like a moisturizer or SPF and everything, but it's like it got a tint. A lot of people with rosacea, who all out there has rosacea, it blends you better. So you don't look quite like a so much like a roadmap. So I'm telling you right now, I want somebody in that White House to confirm. It is rosacea. Sarah Huckabee Sanders, get on that. <laughs> not, not, not. That hashtag news we really want. No. <laughs> Tracy, man, one of these days we have to oh make a God. video <laughs> about politics. That would, I think that would be interesting. Yes, something no one needs. God. Oh, are you kidding me? I think it would be. Much in that, like, we would, like, beat each other in the amazing race. <laughs> I mean, literally, you guys beat on each other. Yeah. Um, I actually do think that that would be a very – for drought for next season, Droughtlander, perhaps, that yeah. would be a very interesting yeah. video. And we can heal the world by showing how people who maybe aren't on the same page with every issue still manage to talk through things respectfully. Right, um, right. You know, right. much like people who aren't necessarily on the same page with Outlander things, talk through things respectfully um, and thoughtfully and have um, respect for the other person's opinion, even though maybe they don't share it. Um, and that's what we see all over the place with your comments for the episodes that we have done so far. So it's fantastic for you guys. Yay. Um, I was telling Carol before we, um, before we came on... Um, the fun that I had this morning, or this morning, um, as I was leaving, finding out that our little office is getting closed and we're um, all going to be we're all going to be working remotely. So that's going to be interesting. But Carol and I were just talking about like how I'm going to need a whole new wardrobe of hoodies like she's got now. Oh I'm my god! Is that a like, dig or is that a Monday's dig? Monday's hoodie, Tuesday's hoodie, and then we <laughs> <laughs> then we were talking about how like. The new thing is not not um, like what were you saying, Carol? Not juicy. Couture I said anymore. you need a. I said you need a juicy sweatsuit, and then I said, wait, I don't think juicy is a thing anymore. Maybe it is, but I said you need athleisure wear, yes. and you need the word Outlander across your rear end. There you go. Because what I was thinking is that Fabletics. Like, do you ever see that commercial with Kate Hudson and the Fabletics? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I've often thought about getting that. The other thing I was going to tell you, and I literally just saw this. As I was like pressing record, I was like, how did we not see this? So I went on IMDb to pull up the information for this episode 
because I will say I don't know anybody's names of any of the characters. They all have our pretend names, which are probably funnier to use anyway. Um, but I figured, you know, for like Indian lady that I don't remember what her name is, I I don't want dances with wolves. Let's call her. Dances with <laughs> I was like, I should probably get her real name since you know we won't be seeing her again. Um, and what do I come upon? Carol, did you know that at, a, I'm, I'm going to assume it was this year's, oh no, it was, it was last year's Comic-Con. So we've known this, this has been out for a whole friggin' year, and we did not know this. What I came up with was a video, IMDb at New York Comic-Con, with Kevin Smith interviewing the Outlander cast. Yeah, yeah, uh-huh, yeah. Would you like to hear some of it? No, but how, why, how? Is his, like, wife a fan or something? I have no idea, but we... Hi, Kevin Smith. Hi, oh, Monmouth County. Hi. Wait, wait. How about showing me some love here, see if Kev? I can do this without, like, screwing everything up. Do you see it? When was that? Do you see it? Do you see it? This... Was it New York Comic Con? That what? was at New York when? Comic Con. And you know what? It had to have been at this year's Comic Con because look at um, Kat's hair. She's got that like bangs and that. short hair thing. I <gasps> couldn't have gone to that. I and couldn't. they wouldn't have trotted Sophie and Rick, Richard Franken out, you know, last year either. Why I mean, Kevin maybe they Smith? But... Kevin Smith must be like a closet Outlander fan. I swear to God, when we're done. Hey, with this. hey, Kevin Smith. Hey, I. Uh, hey, View Askew. Hey. Do I not live in Monmouth County? Hello, am I not at the shore? Like, hello, have I not seen every movie you've ever made five million times? Maybe what How we about should, some love? Maybe what we should do is after this video, it's only two minutes long, two minutes and 14 seconds, maybe we should watch the whole thing as like a special, like, you know, extended feature on the video. Um, hey, hey, Kev, I'm not even supposed to be here today. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing that would make that even better is if Jay showed up too. And Jay was all like, <laughs> "Spoken, spoken, <laughs> hey, drinking beer. Claire, you're so hot. <laughs> <laughs> spoken, we drinking beers. I have to tell you guys that, like, one of Yo, my you're the man, you Nucci <laughs> Bucci, Claire. <laughs> <laughs> One of my guilty pleasure movies of all time that I think is probably, like, if you're just going for, like, cheap laughs, top three funniest movies ever is Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. Uh, I, <laughs> I'm telling you right now, I've seen them all a million times. Um, that movie is funny so AF. So funny, oh yes. Oh, my God. In fact, yes. I think the very first DVD player I got, I bought that DVD. That was, like, the DVD I got. Oh, because I'm you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! So funny. Do you remember Mallrats? That one. I, you know what? I don't know that I ever saw that movie. Also. Oh, I love Jason Lee. Where do you come up with this? Shit? <laughs> I, I, I. Oh, Kevin Smith. Kevin Smith. I know. I know. I just, just, just want to go. Kevin Smith. Outlander, Kevin Smith, Outlander, it's Trash, so weird. Radio. It's Where? so weird. It's That's why I'm like, that. I'm literally looking at this like, how did this happen? And we didn't know how about did it. Happen. <laughs> so I mean, I mean, either either we're gonna watch it after we make this video and at the very end of the video, or I'm gonna watch it when we get off because like, Snoochy Boochie, crazy, crazy, hey, fat man. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, I love them so much. <laughs> the oh, best! The right. best! Did you ever see a video where <laughs> Jay imitates the guy from, <laughs> from Silence of the Lambs? Like, full on naked? <laughs> oh, oh, I think I have. Doing that, I like, weird, I creepy have. dance? Oh. <laughs> Alright, Carol, do you have anything else to report before we jump into this episode? Uh, that I'm really, really tired and happy to be here. That this video making on during the week. You is, could say Thursday. <laughs> is the highlight of my life right now, you guys. This is my social life. Completely. Yes. Now, 
It is. Um, this is totally fun, and we're so really glad that we're being doing here this. with all of you guys. Totally um, look forward to it, even yeah. when I forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you did. We were talking about it earlier today, and I'm like, I okay, I'm almost. I did my rewatch. I'm almost ready. Like she's like, I wish I did. I forgot. You guys, I just sat down. <clears throat> you know. It, when you when you're let's just say when you're going through cancer treatment, it's hours and hours and hours at the hospital and and you know in the emergency room for different things and admitting and getting out and then you're back the next day in the infusion suite and all of that. So you come home and then I had to go back out to the drugstore. They didn't have it. Go to the next drugstore. Finally, I got the kids Dairy Queen and I come home and I sit down and I'm like. <gasps> <sighs> and she texts me and she's like, are you ready? And I'm like, no, actually right seconds before you texted me, I was like reading email and stuff. And I got something from stars and I'm like, Oh yeah, the stars. Blah, blah, blah. It's Thursday. <laughs> so, but I actually, I pulled it together and here I am. I, is it, is it me? Why do they, why does my zipper look dirty? I don't know. It's, Gross. I don't know. All right. I'm sorry, right, you guys. We're now Star. 13 minutes in and people are really going to yell at us. We, we right. really are going to yeah. talk about Outlander. Yeah. Um, what is little sign in the beginning that says this? Is <laughs> way too long. Um, we, yeah. Okay. So what do you think of this episode? Yeah. Do you I, have- I, I, I have a lot to say about certain things, but I don't want to even say it until we get there. Okay. Which All right. Jump just, we're jumping in. We're jumping in. So this is episode 405, Savages. So that pretty much like. Tells us what this is going to be about. Um, the writer is Bronwyn Garrity. Who's the savage? Who is the savage? I think Who's that's the, the point. Yes. And their director is Denise DeNovi. She just, that, I had to, I had to IMDB her because I, um, that name is just so familiar. I don't know whether she's directed before for Outlander. Um, I didn't see it in her credits, but I didn't get past that she's a producer on yet another remake of Little Women. And boy, oh boy, come 2019, we're all going to have to talk about that. Because I don't know what the hell to, to expect with that. With Shira Saronin as Joe and Emma Thompson as Meg. So Claire's sitting on the side <laughs> of the screen. <laughs> all right. It, okay. it dances with wolves. You skipped the Easter egg. Oh, yeah. It's See, the doll. This is, this, this is why I take the notes. <laughs> come on. It's the, it's the doll. Wait, it's the, well, what do we I, have do, I have a question. Is that doll, like supposed to be anything specific that I just didn't get? Like dressed like as a Jacobite or something? I don't know. A, a Jacobite doll? <laughs> I mean, it's dressed, like all the dolls were dressed the same. Are they dressed as a particular thing? King George? I don't know. I really haven't paid enough attention to it. I'm sorry. There's times when I, the Easter egg, I'm like, oh my God. And there's times when I'm like, yeah, it's a doll wrapped up in fabric. Let's I go. will say they wrap that doll up quite nicely. Like you would go and buy like a nice doll today and get it. It'd be like, yeah, do they be like, do you want a gift wrap? And you'd be like, yeah. And they would put like nice tissue on it. Yeah. Sort of like I'm, when you go to Victoria's Secret and you get underwear and you put the tissue all over it. Yes. I'm just so blown away by Claire's Mary Shelley hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, tonight was the first night I noticed the Claire wig and the Claire wig was just really big tonight. Well, I, I understand that it's like the 18th century and she's got a blend, but what the ever loving F is this? It, uh, what, what, I was saying to myself, my God, you, it's, it's almost it's nearly impossible to make this woman look not gorgeous, but yeah, it's like they're yeah. trying. There were yeah. a couple of times in this episode that I was like, what are they doing to our poor Claire? Well, it's almost and, like it's more 18th century that wig. Like with the, it's just really teased and. Whoa, whoa. And Do you mean nineteenth century? Nineteenth century, yes. Yeah. Yes. yes, I agree a thousand percent. It doesn't make sense to me. And why, why, why is Claire aging and Jamie isn't? I'd like someone to explain that to me. Why does Claire have gray hair and he doesn't? See, oh, yeah. I, I, um, why does Claire have gray hair and Jamie doesn't have gray bangs? <laughs> I think Jamie's aging in different ways. I mean, don't talk to me about Jamie's hair. I can't with it. I can't. I just try not to. I try to look away. I'm sorry. What did away. you think of the conversation between Claire and Dances with Wolves? Um, Claire was like, Dances with Wolves is like, oh, 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 oh. and Claire's like, <laughs> Claire's like thinking about it. And then she'll be like. <laughs> okay. Like, At first, I was a little like, uh, is Claire really that all knowing that she can like now understand, you know, the Cherokee language? But then I just kind of got to, I just kind of took it as like, they've been there for a while. 
Mm -hmm. They've interacted before. They don't have shit to do because it's the 18th century. So all day they have nothing to do. Claire's lived long enough with Jamie, who's really good at languages, that like maybe some of that has rubbed off on her. Oh, Um, sure. But. (laughs) But, uh, so that's where I. You have. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah. So like, but she really would be like. Yeah, like, um, Dances with Wolves would be like, you know, and Clara would be like, oh, yes, she is pregnant, but um, only due in eight months, and that's right, she's doing blah, 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 blah. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. I was like, what, what, am I missing part of this? Did they edit some out? <laughs> but it, I just, like I said, I, I kind of took that to be like, they've been there for a while, that maybe this is like a, a day to day thing. Dance with Wolves comes and um, spends time with Claire every day because they're both healers. They're both wise women. Mm-hmm. They swap secrets and they've just kind of like yes. got a little shorthand together. Yes. Yes. Um, I thought it was adorable. I was, it I was. Down, I love it. Claire has a little friend and it's Didn't so you just nice. want to plop your ass right down with them and just jump into the non discussion discussion <laughs> and like pick the herbs that like it looked like they had some nice bundles of time there um you know like wrapping them all up i just love the one i will say the one jump was like like play, pretend that this is like a bundle of time and and uh, dances with walls is like and claire's like oh a cup of tea yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, like, yeah come on well you're getting really good at this claire <laughs> Yeah, she, you're totally right. She said tea. Yeah. And I went, how the f- did you how get tea How do you know it was coffee? Out? How do you know this was more like coffee beans and like not tea leaves? Um, no idea. No yeah. idea. I have no idea how tea came out of that conversation either. Um, but it was very cute. And, um, you know, I was glad to see that Claire has a little friend and whatever. Um, so, okay. So, yeah. So, we see them talking. And then uh, we have a shot at a cabin cabin is done the cabin is finished and this is why i think that they've been there quite a while because holy they have a mackerel okay 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 <clears throat> case in point on the one hand i loved it i loved the hominess of it i loved all the stuff i i was like joanna Gaines has so <laughs> decorated this cabin it's not even funny through the help and, of pottery barn and, and you're like where are they getting all these beautiful those chairs oh my god it was pottery beautiful barn. pottery barn but, at the, at the same time, I looked at a pop barn catalog in a long time. Restaurant just, hardware. Oh, oh, more like um, um, Facebook Marketplace. Um, <laughs> but Wayfair, uh, just what I need. What? Okay. It's it might be that they just kind of went a different avenue. Dinah Gabaldon, as we all know and love, is very <laughs> descriptive. So there are times like when I saw the ridge when they stood there eight million times in their little square last week, looking at it or the week before, whatever. I was like, this is exactly how I pictured this. But this is not how I pictured the interior of this cabin, which is fine, because I love the interior. I pictured it much more sparse. Yes, me too. Me too. I was like, dear God, have they been there for 10, 15 yes, years? Yes, And that's what, I, and that's was, what I'm saying. It like, was so clean. You could eat off the floor. <laughs> Wasn't there a scene at some point, they're at somebody's... Um, um, I just jumped at some point there at somebody's funeral. There's a funny funeral scene later in the books, whatever, but I do or like awake in someone's cabin uh-huh. or whatever. But I also remember stuff on the floor. Like this is like, like you just said, it's like pottery barn cabin. <laughs> so funny. The cabin was so awesome, but yes, you're right. Than, it was better than, it was better than Bella and Edward's cabin. Oh my God. That's just, <laughs> Totally. It was like, like the best tiny house ever. Okay. Oh my like God. you would, you would like have, um, tiny house hunters and you'd go to that cabin and there, it would be one of those ones that there's nothing wrong with it. Like the, like the, what the thing that's wrong with it is like, um, that pillow is not soft enough. Um, or you know, the one square of that quilt is like a little like off center, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. Do you and, think they're <clears throat> sorry? It was like, dear God, the hair, the other, the other thing that it was like, was like a really, really well-designed New York studio, New York city studio. Yes. Where there's like a hundred square feet and you have to use every inch of wall space and every inch. It was like a tiny house. Yes. Totally. Yes. 
did are you thinking we don't think, is Seth Numeric in this? <laughs> <laughs> it is North Carolina. It is North Carolina. 18th century turn tiny house. North I'm Carolina. thinking Seth Numeric. Is did they write the the name Louise in blue <laughs> on the wall? If you guys, if anybody knows what I'm talking about, let me know in the comments on the blog, wherever. Yeah, we won't even tell. I'll crack up. We won't even tell. Um, okay, so wait. Okay, so just, wait. What? There's also like vaulted ceilings in certain areas. Well, there's I windows. Think, there's glass windows. There's Tracy, glass windows. Tracy, Tracy, I was like, this reminds me of when. I was getting married and I was registering for like China and stuff. And I just wanted to get like a, a nicer everyday pattern and call it a day. And mom's like, no, you have to have fun. China, blah, 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 which I never used in 25 years. Um, I feel like, are they meshing the, the cabin they lived in, in the books and the big house? And then we came up with this, like, you know what no, I mean? This, no, I think they just, I because, mean, Another thing that I think about is 18th century. You guys, I know we talk about it ad nauseum. We grew up right next to Valley Forge, and there are actually authentic cabins still there. Right. Uh, what do they have? Like two bunks? Like they're they're so there's the well, the size. they're soldiers' cabins though. They're not like cabins I know, that people I lived know, in. but the cabin. Let's face it. We <laughs> all remember the cabins were were small. So I'm not complaining. I love this, but I'm just like I'm confused. What's coming down the pike? But I yes, I I 100% agree with you. Like, look, the fact is, is that like, if they had the cabin in our heads of reading the books, it would be boring. AF. AF. <laughs> you know, there'd be nothing there. And this cabin, like, I really want one of those 360 degree, like, cameras in there. Uh, Please oh, do this. Like, Please real do estate? This. Um, um, Claire and Jamie, could you call Keller Williams and put your house up <laughs> and have them do... <laughs> The, uh, what do you call that? The panorama. The panorama view where yeah. we can control it on our computers and see the whole thing. Outlander, um, set design people, please. And art direction and stuff. Please get on that because um, I would say, love to, I want to see every inch, every square inch of that cabin. Yes. The and the inside is, of the cabin is almost as nice as the outside. Oh my view. God. And the outside, the perfect porch, like the perfect symmetry of the cabin. <laughs> Oh my god. Um, All right. Wait, I have on. a few more. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The I have to revisit the glass. Uh, I have to window. revisit a couple things. What? The window. The window. The window, Great. like in the books, one. of course. I'm going to say in the books. We somebody that should be a drinking game every time we say in the books. Drink. <laughs> we'll drink every time we say. I'll in just the books. I'll just hold on to this then. <laughs> <laughs> but in the books, like they make a big deal, like like glass windows are a big deal. You know, you can't just like go to the local, you know, Seven Eleven at. Like right. Willem's Creek or whatever, you got to go into Cross Creek to get the the glass windows, the and leaded glass, expensive and whatever. <clears throat> and there were at least two sets, two windows, one with like really fancy steel. That's what I was talking about. The grading, yeah, they were amazing. Like amazing, crap. Okay, and the other thing, and again, I get why they do it, and I'm glad they do because it makes it really interesting to look at. But the furniture in there. The, oh the, my god! The stairs, the, the ladder backs are the beautiful. armoire. I know. I mean, oh my god! And so this is when I saw this cabin. I was like, oh, okay. I get how Claire speaks the um, Cherokee language now because they've been there for five years. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So wait, what's the conversation they have when they hug? She gets dressed all of a sudden and starts putting on all her clothes, even though he's the one leaving. Well, wait. Can we? Can we go? Can we circle back for just a second because we missed the introduction of another. Very, 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 very famous character to the book readers. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for the White Sow! Woo! Oh my god, how fun was it to see the White Sow? Is that it wasn't white? It's not it's not like Wilbur. The one that she talked to that she was like 
you're too bad. Like you're going to be our Thanksgiving feast yes, or whatever she the said. The one that was eating Jamie's hat. Oh, I didn't even, I didn't even realize. What was that pig, pig's name? The White Sow. Didn't it, it didn't have a name? Have, no, it was called the White Sow and it was paying in the ass. In the um, books. Wow, that's funny because I didn't even put two and two together. I just said, look how cute it is. I want a pig. The White Sow lived in the, um, under, like under the house, I think. Yeah. Um, and just got into everything and was a big pain in the butt. Um, and it was like one of those horror movie, like animals that lives under something that all it has is like eyes. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it would like attack and stuff and they all hated it. But the white sow was like almost. They already show Clarence. the white sow. What? I don't remember it until she was feeding it when it, they were gone. No, they showed the white sow cause he's eating Jamie's hat and Jamie's like, where's my hat? Oh, all and right. I, was like, I don't know. I need and to Ian really was watch like, this. Yeah, the white sow is eating your hat, and um, it almost took my arm off because it's the white sow. I hate it. Um, yeah, see, I, I, I fully admit, <laughs> you guys. Excuse me. I, I missed some dialogue in this one, so I need to go back. I need to come up with a better thing than plugging my computer into my TV because then I can't stop and rewind. And you right, know. that's hard. Oh my God! Um, did I ask you, you guys? We interrupt this Outlander conversation to talk about a show for two seconds that's like Outlander. Have you ever heard of Frontier? No. Oh. Um, it's a Netflix original with Jason Momoa, and it's it's in Canada, and it's actually, it's 18th century, but it's like before this. And it's red coats. It's all the same stuff going on, only it's going on in Canada. Honest to God, with the Indians, and um, Jason Momoa is the lead character, and he plays a guy whose like father was Irish and mother was um, Indian, and but then they have this whole regiment of of soldiers and the women, really cool female roles of strong women. Uh-huh. One is a tavern owner, and one yeah, it's an it's a neat show. It's not it doesn't quite have the wow factor that something like Outlander does, but it's it's a neat show. Oh, Jason Momoa, okay. and if you're not following it's, him on Instagram, you should be because he's really cool. Yeah, and I'm sorry, like any reason not to watch a show with Jason Momoa? <laughs> Hello, it's a no brainer. I know, I know. Okay, so the cabin is great. The cabin ha- like the hanging shelf with all the pots. Oh, oh God, God. Ever, I, please. John Gary Steele, please, if you're listening to this podcast, oh, give I us know. a 360 camera. Give us a 360 camera. Okay. Yes. I can't believe I forgot what – I just listened to it, and now I remember why. Oh, my God. Amazing. What? Can I go somewhere, or am I going to be going too far in the dialogue in the cabin? You already hit the white sow, and Ian being like, blah, blah, blah. No, I think we're there it. now that um, – Claire's he like getting dressed. Had, she puts on that cool as shit uh-huh, um, vesty uh-huh, thing. Uh-huh. And he had a dream about, and he had a about dream. Brianna. He dreamed a dream. I dreamed a dream he of the time gone by. by. <laughs> and the tigers <laughs> come at night. And okay. she had a birthmark behind her ear. And I did. And I kissed, I kissed, kissed it. Her. I was like, <laughs> I was like <laughs> the hell do you think you did with the <laughs> Oh, we see what we see what this household's gonna be like. <laughs> I don't even know. He drops my Bri and saw her birthmark. Creepy. Kissed hey, her Jay- on her birthmark behind her left ear, which is sort of a creepy place for a dad to kiss a daughter. I was like, did he just say kiss <laughs> behind the ear? Weird. Totally. Can yeah, the dad ever kiss us behind the ear? Oh, get over <laughs> Um, yeah, that was, a, that was a little weird, but the, but the dream itself was very cool. The dream itself was very cool. And I love that they're bringing this in. Like, it's just so, oh, this is so juicy that he's having dreams about Brianna. Right. And he didn't really, but the thing is he didn't really, like, there wasn't any other point to the dream besides that. Right. It was just like, yeah, like you kind of expect it to be like, does she have a birthmark behind her left ear? Yeah, she does. Because I dreamed about her. And, you know, we went for a walk, and then we went to get ice cream, and then we did this, and then we, now it was just like, nope, that's all. Does he know what ice cream is? <laughs> I dreamed she had a birthmark. And that's what took happened. It, that's all. Took, it, took in a movie. <laughs> um, all right. So keep okay. going. I, I loved when they hugged, and I'll tell you why. Because he was telling her, and she was like, yes. And, um... And then they hug and like, it was some, I was proud of Sam Hewen. Like it was, 
sometimes the best acting, there's nothing spoken. It's all in your eyes. And he, wait, hang on. I have to fast forward through him talking about like kissing. Sam Hewitt had a fantastic night tonight. He, he really did. There. But uh, you guys like, go back and watch it and rewind it because they, they talk about the dream and then they hug and he has a look in his, you got to look in your eye. <laughs> like you have him kiss Brianna in a year. So he's got a look in his eye that is so on the mark and, and go in there for Sam. You don't really see Sam, you know, they give him a lot of kitschy, fun little dialogue. You know what I mean? But you don't really see this from him. And he's, he's just staring and thinking. And I'm like, whoop, 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 whoop. Yeah. very good. Yeah. I was watching very Sam's good. eyes a lot in this, in this episode, mm -hmm. because there's just a lot of really big moments like that. And just his, his eyes are very expressive. Um, it was very, very interesting to watch. All right. <clears throat> we travel through time. We're in Inverness, 1971. And again, the timeline, okay, I'm like thoroughly confused by the timeline because clearly it has been, I'm going to say, at the ridge, I don't know, they can't have had that cabin built and put together like that in less than four months, I don't think. Oh my I mean, God. Do you? Do you? Is well, how did Jamie you like and Ian and Claire are building it? I don't think that their Indian friends are coming to help them, you know? Um, maybe, who knows? Okay, but wait, how did you like how when they were building it last week, I don't think we ever discussed this, like, all three of them would be, like, lifting one, and I was like, this is going to take him seven <laughs> years to build this place. Well, and, then, and then in the next episode, Joanna right. Gaines lives there. So anyway, but, but yeah, so, like, say four months. Maybe, you know, maybe a little less, but, but I would say that for Roger and Brianna in the future, in the future, um, in the future. In the future. Um, okay, Roger like drove to Inverness, so it, maybe maybe it's been a day. You know, I, I don't think it's been all that long since Roger got the letter or got, or or got the, was on the phone with Gail, right? And um, found out that that Brianna was going. To see well, the time has passed, it's and didn't a, day, like a week maybe. And and it was Mrs. What's her name? <clears throat> Miss, um, Miss Miss Baird. Miss Baird. Yes. Miss. Yes. Miss. So yeah. he's in Inverness. He talks to the cab driver that took Bree somewhere, and um, he wasn't really very helpful. Um, then and it's real cute in a hat. Oh, I know. I know. Um, I know the little like you know stocking winter cap. Um, you can use and it's, it. It is around the same time because remember. Um, it was, the holidays hadn't happened yet, remember? So it's like, what's yes. time? Yes. Okay. So, I loved that town. What it, where Inverness. is that town? Inverness. I mean, like today, like, is that a set? Oh, I don't know. I don't I know loved it's it. real Inverness or, or like fake Inverness. I don't know. Um, I don't understand why. I guess Ian's still young. See, he doesn't look young, so it's kind of hard to believe, but I guess he's like, got to stay with Jamie and Claire because he's so young but don't you feel like he'd want to like be like Cross Creek see ya like I'm gonna no, stay here he wants to be out in the wilderness he wants to I be guess. He wants I don't to be know I see him man. as wanting to be around things happening and he thinks Claire's cool because she's you know pretty worldly and stuff but um, I don't know but anyway Roger so Roger um, talks to Miss Baird <laughs> who's sweeping the stoop much like Mrs. Bear used to do. Mm -hmm. um, and she's like, oh, no, yo, she was, I remember her. She was an American girl, and she was kind. No, she didn't, didn't leave anything around. Nothing at all. <laughs> certainly <laughs> not, you know, oh, certainly oh, not this letter. <laughs> <laughs> that specifically uh -oh. says that I have to send it to you 10 days after she's gone. But, oh, yeah, I forgot all about it. <laughs> but you, so she wasn't suspicious at all. And Roger's like, Okay, thanks. <laughs> okay, here I go. Just in case you change your mind and you think of something else, I'm going to walk really slowly. <laughs> and then Mrs. Barrett is like, wait, hold on just one minute. 
She did <laughs> read this letter and she had to wait for a year um, before sending it to you. And the clock has been ticking already, but I might as well give it to you now. So she gives Roger the letter. And Roger's like, um, this can't be given. Okay. And we are back to the past. And we're I, in what I think is Willem's Creek, right? Yeah. Wait. Yeah, wait. This, watching this, like, I don't remember being like, geez, Brie, like, she just seems like she couldn't care less about him at all. I know. Now, this, and this was, this and was the very letter, much like the book. the letter was like, dear Roger. Dear, sorry. Dear, dear blank. Yeah. <laughs> dear, it's your name here. <laughs> I, <laughs> whatever your name. I um, state your name. I'm really, I'm really, I'm really sorry. Because you were kind of fun sometimes. But, <laughs> but um, I have things to do. So enjoy yourself in this world. And I'll enjoy myself in that world. And I'll see you later. Peace and, out. Peace out, Rod. It, it was so, like, cold and unfeeling. I know. I know. And he called her his girlfriend. So, right, like, right, poor right, thing. Right. Okay, anyway, let's right. go. Okay, so we're so we're back in time. We're at Willems Creek. Jamie and Ian are looking forward. They're going to get some families to come live on their edge. Um, I, was a little, I guess I was a little surprised that Ian didn't stay behind with Claire. Um, but I guess maybe Jamie, like, needed the manpower to, you know, there's two of them. Like, would you, would you, would you, were you surprised that Jamie left Claire by herself? Yes. But he sees Claire as can do anything. Like, he sees Claire as tougher than him. Right. And Claire wouldn't stand for it. She, and she knows how to use a gun. Right. And she knows the Indians. Right. I think she, when you saw her with Dances with Wolves in the beginning at the creek, like, chit-chatting, it's obvious they do this all the time. Right. So he knows that the Indians would not hurt her. Right. And that she, if she had a problem, she could go to the Indians for help. Well, that's, I think that's probably pushing it. But, uh, you know, as we see later, you know. Uh, as we see later, the, the the lead Harvard Indian said to her, I'm surprised to see you here with well, these I, people. No, he was, but he was more like, wait, who are you again? Um, wait. Um, oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Wife of Bear, bear Color. Yeah. Okay, there you go. All right. All right. I got it. Yeah. Um, but you know, I, was a little, I guess I was a little surprised. But but I also see why it was important for Ian to go with Jamie because he did have a big job ahead of him. He needed to find some settlers, and as he was doomed to find out, um, it was not going to be easy to do. Um, so he, but but oh, we we skipped where when they were still in the cabin, he swiped one of the candlesticks when Claire wasn't looking. Yes. Right. Um, so he goes knock 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 on the door of the smithery. I didn't and the understand this. Smithery's not this. home. I didn't understand this. I don't think it was explained. Let's break this down. Uh, was it for comedic purposes only? I mean, it was funny as hell. It was that that she like, was like, "I'll have my stuff on you." She was so. She was like, "Oh, it's a very good day indeed." <laughs> Uh, all right. So we were talking about when we last. Oh, 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 are we on? Yes, we're on. Sorry, guys. We had to stop. So I, I have to beautify myself all over again. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Babe. This is as good as it gets with my brown eyebrows tonight. Okay. We were at Slutty McSlaughterson's house. Um, what is the damage? <laughs> I don't know. I'm just thinking it's comic relief, but I wonder if she's going to show up somewhere else. Yeah. But I think. I think we're going to see her again. You think? It's so funny. I said to somebody, like, I mean, we, you guys will be watching this on Sunday. We've already seen this, obviously. There was a lot of chatter about this episode amongst the folks who have maybe get, watched it a little early so we can compare these little shows for you. Um, I haven't, well, as if I'd even see and it. But I, I thought that this show, I thought that this whole episode... God, why didn't you tell me I had these on? Oh, for the love of God. Sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> you are probably not. I'm afraid, all right? I'm afraid. <laughs> I would have done the whole rest of the show with these 
friggin' things on. Okay. Um, Andy Dufresne. <laughs> oh my god. I oh, tell me I... It. Everyone needs right, it. We'll talk about that later. Um, so we'll talk about that. Remind me. Wait. Oh, 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 oh. I swore I swore up and down that this entire episode this is what this is what the book this book is, you guys. Like this book isn't like Voyager that I have memorized forwards and backwards. This book like stuff happens that I'm not remembering. I would have sworn on a stack of Bibles that this episode was all new. Like that wasn't in the book. Okay. Guess what? Most of it's in the book. I love it because <clears throat> God bless my ADD because I don't remember any of it. I know, I know. I, I don't. Know. I love. It's like a whole new show. I'm like, I know. who would have thought that drums would be the season that would have me going? I love this show. I know, I know. But it's like all like 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 scalping all in the book, all in the book, and I don't remember a damn thing. But Slutty right. McSlaughterson, I don't think is in the book. Okay. I, they're going somewhere with so, this. There's but, no right. so way. What do, you, what do you think Jamie wants to make with the camel stick? Okay, I didn't understand something. What? Oh, I know. I thought he wanted to make Claire another ring or something. Uh, well, that would be my guess, too. Although he could probably make her, like, 40 rings. Or, but, like, but, a ring and a necklace and earrings and, you know, like, a bracelet. Like this. Yes. And um, keys and the <laughs> doorknob and okay. So explain to me why if Slutty McSlutterson's husband is the greatest blacksmith on the planet? No, Smith, Smith, not a blacksmith. A smither, Smithy, Smithy. Yeah, because as it's coming out, <laughs> right now, what's a blacksmith? A blacksmith does more like you know iron work. Sensitive. Yes. So what's her husband? He's the silversmith. And 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 what is okay? We I'm I'm jumping ahead. I'm sorry. Okay, it's just keep all going. All the Smith thing does is make stuff. So I could be a blacksmith. I could be a silversmith. I could be a goldsmith. I could be a you know whatever right. bricksmith. Right. I don't know. Right. Whatever. Whatever. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay. So what's next? <clears throat> um. Um. In the so pub. Yes. So Jamie wants something very particular made. No, no, no. We're back at the Mueller's. Um, so the Mueller's, Claire's the Mueller's. The baby is here. Um, Papa died of some unforeseen thing that we don't know, but, you know, maybe rest in peace. Um, and I love that German lady, Mrs. Mueller, um, Fraulein Mama, you know, mm -hmm. when she's mm -hmm. like to Claire, like, you know, Fraulein Clara, do you have your own grandchild? Will you share mine? And and here we go again with poor Claire missing on Brie. Missing on Brie, I know. And I know. you should have thought of that before you checked your ass all the way to the 18th century. She had to do it. She did it for love. She did it for love. Um, Never in a million years. A million years. Even when your kids are older and like don't need you anymore. <laughs> I'm sorry. Even 18. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Not oh. interesting. Talking about Keelan turning 18. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, so, okay. So, weird um, uh, uh, Rupert looking dude. Oh my God. I thought the same thing. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, it's the new Rupert. So, wait. Yes. So, we're back in Williams Creek. Williams Creek. And Jamie meets with the. Okay, so we're we're back in the pub, and Poldark's trying to push his idea. <laughs> okay, wait, wasn't it so Poldark? This it scene? was very, yeah, it was very Poldark. Poldark, very Poldark, but Poldark would get up and shake his curly hair around and get in the face and be like, "You need to do this." No, but Jamie was Jamie was not like that pushy. Jamie like takes a step back. Jamie Jamie's had a lot of really really great techniques in this scene, mm -hmm. which we'll get into. But yes, I thought the same thing about New River. Same exact thing. It's like the same guy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so so they're all like, thanks, but no thanks. And Jamie's like, huh? Then Jamie meets up with who I like to call the young William H. Macy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> do you know who I mean? Yeah. He was just, he was totally the young you William H. Macy. You think he's William H. Macy? Macy? Yes. Yes. I, that's, Why? That's what I saw. That's what I saw. That's what he was. I don't no. No, it's totally young one. I liked his little hat. Yes. Um, so I he, wish someone would put a little hat on Jamie. So, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> well, I like Jamie's tripod. When he's wearing that, it's all good. It's all good. Um, 
But then, so Jamie buys them. This whole scene between the two of them, Jamie's just a master at, like, you know, getting information. Like, right. this, is where, this right. is where Jamie, like, just shines, and he's just so awesome. When right. he's, like, being very like, diplomatic and, like, just mm-hmm. kind of, mm-hmm. he knows exactly what to say. So he buys young William H. Macy a drink. And he's like, uh, yeah, I'm, you know, the Laird of uh, Lollybrock. Uh, where are you from? And the kid, kid, young William H. Macy's is like, you know, blah, blah, blah. And Jamie's like, oh, it's very, very nice there. <clears throat> um, and then Jamie knows where to go. Jamie knows where to go. He says, were you present? And he's totally bonding with young William H. Macy. And it's the smartest thing. And young William H. Macy's like, yeah, I was in, you know, Fort blah, blah, blah. And James like parts in there, and all of a sudden they're like this, you know, this bond together. This. So, young William H Macy like is like, okay, here's the draw. Nobody wants to take your land because we're gonna get our butts taxed, and the tax collectors are douchey, and they take our money, they take our land, they take our animals, they take everything, and they suck, and that's why we're all here. So and like, Jamie's oh. like, here we bring go again. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, and this guy's name really, like, I mean, of course, I'm going to call him Young William H. Macy, but his name is really Brian. And that's like, and that's another way that Jamie, like, bonds. Like, My father's Brian's name, name is, is Brian. Brian. Like, it was just masterful, Jamie. Can you imagine if you did that today? <laughs> like, everybody's name is Brian. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Can't trigger that cat that into Brian. Um, but it was a masterful it was a masterful performance by Jamie. Yes. Um, really, really great. And uh, so Jamie's kind of in a bit of a spot here because, you know, and, he, and we had a little hint of this a couple episodes ago when he was talking to Governor Tryon about, like, there's, you know, the bad guys that are the regulators, but there's also my bad guys, which are the tax collectors, and they're kind of douchey as well. So, bleh. So, Brian... Young William H. Macy is involved with a, with a protest group, and, you know, maybe Jamie wants to go. Okay, so we're back at the Muller's house. It's staticky again. <clears throat> I'm staticky? Move away from your mi- microphone. Yeah. Okay, not so far. <laughs> yeah, move the microphone. Near? You look You look like Joan Cusack in ah. 16 Candles. <laughs> Near? Ah. I think I have a hernia because it hurts, like, here. Oh, my God. I'm sorry. Let's, please. I'm not kidding. I'm going to have to go. Oh, I have to push my hernia back in. I'm sorry. Okay, so now um, we're back at the little cabin where the baby has been get born. Yes. And there's a little doll for the baby. Yes, well, the Opa, the Opa, the grandpa has arrived. Um, yes, the, um, Gerard de Perdue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Is, he is pretty Gerard de Perdue-ish. Um, so they named the baby Clara, and that's just so sweet. And then, the, then we see that the doll that was purchased during the Easter egg is actually Opa. Grandpa brought it for the little baby. Yes. Um, then they hear a commotion outside. Rolo yes. gets all barky. Yes. And yes. it's some Indians that are giving their horses water from their creek. Okay. From their I land. Still, I st- like, that's the kind of thing that in modern day you would see it happening. Like kids going through my backyard or something who I didn't know. And I'd be like, oh. Look, there's kids going through the backyard. All right, is there any milk? Like, I, I what, well, dude? They're just getting water. Like, right. they're not doing anything to you. Right. Like, wh- right? Well, I mean, look, it's the same old, same old. And, you know, 250 years, nothing much has changed. It's like these people are different. We don't understand them. We don't understand the way they do things. Um, so therefore we're afraid of them. We're afraid they're going to hurt us. So we are really defensive and, you know, we don't want them around. And they don't look scary. (laughs) I mean, I would think though that once they hear, once they hear, you know, had Indian guy speak English so well, they'd be like, me, you speak English? Really? Okay. Wouldn't you like expect them? First of all, none of them look Native American. They all like facial features. One dude looks like he just did a Calvin Klein ad, Harvard Indian. Well, I think they look, I think they look Native American. They, I, I, just... I, 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 he, I don't think he does. I, I'm not saying they aren't. I'm just saying I'm not see, you know, sometimes for casting, you can, you kind of have to make exceptions or whatever, but no, I, I don't think they're making any I, exceptions I, here. I, I don't think they look scary. 
And I'm sorry, but when he's like, oh, oh, sorry, we were just trying to get water for our horses. He's really not scary. Well, so that's like, true. That's true. I this mean, this dude speaks English. If Harvard Indian speaks, uh oh, you're, you're frozen. You're frozen. If if am Harvard I frozen now? Indian speaks English, now you're back. Okay. If Harvard Engl- Indian speaks English, and from what I'm seeing, I don't think they look all that scary. They're not like on horses with the long feathers coming down and like axes. So if this dude was like, sorry, we're just getting water out of your creek. You could be like, all right, dude, you know what? It's all right. But next time go down there. Like, I just don't see what the problem is. I mean, you know, again, like it's I'm, I'm sure that living it's prejudice, it's, of course it's prejudice. But probably living in the area, you hear stories about, like, there's many different tribes in the area, um, many different, you know, some, fr- I mean, uh, John Quincy Meyer said it himself, some are friendlier than others. Um, right. You know, I keep thinking that, like, a couple people said, like, when we were talking about last week, the Harvard-educated Indian, and we just call him that, you know, because he speaks, he speaks really, really, really flawless, <laughs> like, unaccented. Um, yeah academic sounding English. <laughs> right. Oh, did somebody um, not like it, that? I think so. I mean, whatever. I, what do they say? I don't really remember, but, um, in any case, the, the, the issue, not for what I was going to say. Um, oh, like I, I, I didn't, I don't buy it. I don't buy it. It still takes me out of the scene every time he opens his mouth. And Thank the fact you. is that what, like, look, John Quincy Meyer would know this tribe at least a little bit. I'm sorry, but he would. If he, if he, if his wouldn't the job, Mullers, wouldn't the sh- Mueller's? No, maybe, I don't even think they would, but John Quincy Myers' job is, that's how he earns a living. He trades with the Indians and he trades with local Indian tribes. Of course he's going to know this tribe. And if he knows this tribe, of course he's going to know that at least two people in the tribe speak really good English. I mean, there's just, like, that was, it was just it, silly. It doesn't it make was sense. silly. It makes no sense at all. That, like, I get it, you know? You know, some of the people in the tribes, um, like like the traders were around enough that maybe they picked up some English. I think in the books, in the books, um, it was French. Like they, some of the English Indians spoke French, and Jamie, of course, speaks French because he speaks like every language, and actually thirds too. Um, but it just it made it makes no sense to me. It makes no sense that no sense Zero. either. Either he speaks English, and John Quincy Myers knows that. And, like, was like, well, there's a tribe two days ride from you that, or two days walk or whatever that um, at least a couple people on the tribe speak, you know, you can, you can communicate with them. Or, well, it's Harvard English. <laughs> or John Quincy Meyer knows them and is like, knows that they can speak. Whatever. I, that was, like, a way left turn. Whatever. Okay. It, yeah. um, but anyway. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm caught. Um, oh, wait, ooh, I'm caught. Ah. Okay. So, um, so yeah, so Claire talks everybody down from the ledge. Everything's pretty good to go when, um, had any guy sprinkle something around. And that was ill-advised because now, um, air, you know, scared Indians is, uh, like freaked out. He's like, he's like put a curse on my land and Claire's no, it's just a blessing. It's all good. Why is he putting a blessing on the water in front of this guy's house? I don't know. And I mean that I'm not going to go and say anything about that because I don't know the history of it. Maybe that's a thing that they would do after the horses drank to thank the gods for, you know, providing the water or the, or the land or the whatever. <laughs> Did you just you make know. all that up in your head? I mean, maybe, I don't know. Maybe it's a thing. I don't know. Totally. Kinda... Maybe. I agree a thousand percent. It's just funny. That it could be something says... in the book that I'm not remembering. I don't know. Or he could be cursing. Them. <laughs> or it could really be cursing him because he's the mean, never, like, mean guy. Um, okay. Back in the cabin. Claire has returned. And I loved every minute of all of the scenes that were at part, this part. It's yeah. just Claire being all domestic on the ranch. And, and just she... showing how she's like, biding her time until Jamie comes back. She's How many times have you had a day like that where no one's home and you do this and you take out the garbage and you fold some clothes and you go and you do some project or like a Saturday, you know right. what I mean? Right. And right. everyone's out and then you're like, huh, 
and she's got no internet, no TV, no telephone. Right. Not even a book. Oof. I know. But I just love how she's feeding the animals, and she's all nice, being all nice and cute to Clarence, and feeding the white sow, and like, you know, doing all her things with her herbs, and um, <coughs> she does notice the missing candlestick. Yes. Yeah, so that, and so. then they, then they go to the next day, and it's the exact same thing. It's like Groundhog's Day for Claire. Right. And I just love the scene where she just pours herself a good stiff one. Mm-hmm. She's like, this. she's like, I'm done. And it's like, she's, 10 like, you, in the she, she's like you with the Santa Margarita that's been in the fridge for a week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, even I didn't say that. <laughs> um, and she's like this. <laughs> <laughs> I just watched her do it. <laughs> it's All a right. glass like this big so her whole hand covers it okay back to Willems Creek and Ian and Jamie are getting ready to leave and uh, they, it's not been a good trip they don't know what they're going to do um, I do okay. like that Jamie was like don't worry about it I'm going to like convince them that the tax collector isn't a big thing because he's going to have to go through me first and you know fall for him straight whatever but then the bit of the horse breaks they're all like crap Jamie's like and go get fixed. Go, just, just go. I don't want to know. I'll just go. Just get it fixed. Just it was it. so um, um, Jack and the Beanstalk. Because, like, he gave him the little purse. Like, and he was just supposed to send some, spend some. <laughs> but he spent, like, the whole thing. And he had to come home and be like, I have nothing left. So, Ian goes to the smithy. And the smithy's like, yeah, shut up. Uh, yeah, no. I'm Give going it all. Home. I'm going home. And, of course, we knew, like, right away. Um, but Ian did not. You and could see him from behind. Turns around and it's... Did you know? Did you know at all that he was showing up? Yes. He... I mean, I, I, know. I knew he was coming. I knew he was coming back at some point in this. Yes, season. I knew he was going to come back in this episode. Uh, I did not know it was this episode, and I knew it was him before he turned around. Of it was course. sort of like, uh, and. Loved the gray. Love, love, love the gray hair. And um, keep going because I want to say something when okay. we get to Jamie. So, part. you know, he's like, Ian's like, well, it takes take 15 chunks. He's like, I'll take 21. And he's like, you know. That's all I have. Okay, whatever. Um, and meanwhile, Jamie uh, decides, well, I sent Ian to the blacksmith. I'm going to go to the Smithy Smith, to Slutty McSlut's house. And again, she's so funny. And I can't imagine that this was just like some <laughs> isolated, like, like, you know, um, side note of humor. Like, she's all, you know, care to wait inside? I'll serve you a hot piece of pie. <laughs> I wrote it down. <laughs> and then he's thinking it's funny. Oh, my God. It was so hilarious. And I just can't. Uh, she's got to show up again. This is, it was just too, too random to, like, be random. I don't know. <clears throat> okay, so Ian's back. The minute Jamie hears that he paid 21 shillings or whatever he paid, Jamie's like, Ian, hold up, bro. No, this, no, no. Ian, you know, really? He's goes, like, what? Goes back to the blacksmith. He goes to the blacksmith like, you know, what are you trying to do? Take advantage of this young boy, whatever. And Marcel turns around <laughs> cried like a baby. Cried like a baby. Who here cried like a baby? Sorry, I'm about to cry like a baby. <laughs> um, I was really shocked at my reaction to this scene. I have only had a handful of things from the beginning of the books until now that have really gotten this kind of reaction out of me and this was one of them Ian my own we Ian came over to me and said are you okay I was a sobbing mess and I don't usually cry in front of my family like at tv and stuff like I I do I just like I was was this first 10 minutes of up sobbing yes like (gasps) I was because it it for any of you who didn't read the books, Murtaugh is dead in the books. And, and not only dead, you'd never get Murtaugh closure in the books. 
he's just gone. Oh, he's gone. <laughs> he's just gone. And the rest of the books you have mention of him. And every time you do, you just have to put the book down and just sit there and like, you're just attached to him. And he's kind of the kind of character where you don't realize he's like Denny Duquette. You don't realize how attached to him you are until he's gone. And so for me, this was a gift. And I was sitting there thinking the word gift. This was a gift they have given us. This to was give Lafayette. Us, this was they, Lafayette. They, they gave us Murtaugh back. But no, it's not. Because it is. But it, you don't, you're, you care about Lafayette, but you don't care like you care about Murtaugh. Murtaugh's your family. It was like bringing back a, a, a deceased family member. It was so powerful and it brought out emotions that I just had no idea were in there. I just sat there for a good 10 minutes and cried like because it was like somebody in my own life right. coming back, coming back. It was like he was brought back to us. Right. He was Lazarus. Right. Murtaugh was Lazarus. Right. It was amazing. Right. So I thank all of you who did this for us. Yeah. I mean, that it was just wonderful. But the two of them both were so great. I mean, this is why I said earlier that Sam just had, like, a fantastic episode. I watched that, the scene with the two of them, I watched his eyes the whole time. Mm -hmm. And his eyes, they would just fill up. And they would, they, uh, oh, he was, it was so good. It was so good. Um, I don't think right now. I need to I don't And then the smile, and then the, Oh my god! I know it was it was so great. It was so so great. And, when he's and like, then the hug, yeah. Like they stood there for a minute, like he was holding on to his shoulder or whatever. And then, and then and then Jamie hugs him and then puts his head down like a little kid because he's his number one. He's his godfather, but number two, he was like a surrogate father. Like, right, oh right, my god. right. I mean, and and you then know, Ian, you forget you forget how long it's been since they saw each other. And it's Ian, been twelve years. Yes, yes. And Ian is like. It's so excited this is happening know, right now. I know, I know. He's heard, he's heard the adventures. I mean, he wants to hear more. Well, oh, and when he said that, I was like, okay, we get it. You like adventures and want some in your life, Ian. Shut up and go sit in the corner. <laughs> Let them have their moment. Just take your adventure-loving self and just shut up. We don't need to hear you saying, oh, I've heard your adventures. <laughs> um, I, I was not bothered by that. I love it. <clears throat> I'm being a wise guy. Okay. Come on. So the reunion, this was a fantastic reunion. Some might argue almost as good as the Claire and Jamie reunion. I said that. Almost as good. We'll, 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 we'll discuss, we'll, we'll do a okay. comparison when we get there. Yeah. But. I can't, I can't have those reactions because I'm showing that I still need to get my dental implant <laughs> and I have a big gaping hole back there. Okay. Listen, um, okay. I had the same thought in my mind. I was like, this is almost as good as the Jamie and Claire reunion. Right. I was like, dare right. I say it is? is because it I will tell you why, or what I think is one reason, we didn't know it was coming. I mean, book readers, it's kind of a fun drinking game, I ain't gonna lie. Um, book readers knew the reunion was coming. I mean, like, everybody knew the reunion was coming because they promoted the hell out of it, which I thought was stupid and bad. I, um, I, I hated it. Now that you're it. not online 24 hours a day, I had no idea. Like, well, no, I knew no, no, no. They didn't promote, I mean, they really didn't promote, like, I didn't know. And, oh, this is what I was going to say. God bless every executive producer and producer and anybody in charge over there at Outlander because they did not put Duncan LaCroix in the opening credits. Right. God bless all of you. Because I don't like, you know, there's a there's a picture. I'm not going to say what the picture is, even though it's out in the world of the, of the internet, like I've seen it, of something that happens that you can probably put two and two together based on the end of this episode that happens. And there's a picture of after it happens, um, you know, on, uh, floating around the internet. I know that it happens because I've read the books. Uh, I still don't like seeing it because I don't want to know oh, how. Oh, I bet I know what you're talking about. I haven't seen gonna it. It's going to happen and what it's going to look like when it does happen. 
I, so, oh boy. like, I loved not knowing that Murtaugh was going to show up in this episode. Right, exactly. And I did not know, I did not know, I didn't expect it until right. they go to the blacksmith and there he is. <laughs> and I knew the minute I saw him, even from behind, he didn't have to say anything. I was just like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. He oh my looks god, fantastic. I oh love the gray hair. Um, But... I just appreciated that 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 reveal and that surprise so much. People at Outlander, if you are listening to us, do more things like that. Actors don't like put in your contract that you need to be in the front credits, in the opening credits. Go in the back end. Now, Duncan Lacroix, I'm sure, will be in the front end. But that's he surprise. was before Diane Gabaldone con- consultant. If you noticed, he was the first thing that popped up yes, on the screen after yes, the show. Yes, and I'm sure he'll be on the front now, but um, <coughs> so good. So good. Okay, so we good. need to okay. keep going. Got to move, gotta move on. Got to move on. All right, so, so, okay. So we're back at the cabin. Pastor Godfrey, I don't know who he is, but, and because I thought it was a, I don't know, I don't know what I thought, but anyway, there's a Pastor Godfrey. So I guess they have a church somewhere. Comes to the knock on the door. Petra and the baby are dead. They've died of measles outbreak. And it's very sad because they were very cute. That was a cute baby. Um, but it's because of the Indian curse. And Clara's like, no, it's not. It's because measles is a spreadable disease and you just all go. And their, <laughs> and their uh, immune systems were... were and were, their immune systems were compromised. Right. Um, keep talking because I get my notes switched these because they're... And their immune system are compromised. So they, of course, succumbed to... The measles when the parents did not, and right. um, well, the parents the, already had it. Parents, yeah, that's where they got we, it. We find duh. Out, we find Claire, out before. Claire realizes, like you know, they probably, you know, it was incubating when she had the baby. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> so, so Pastor Godfrey is like, yeah, Air Air Mueller. How do you say that? Hair Air Mueller. Air I don't care. Hair he Mueller was like, yeah, good luck like, getting him to feel that way. He's crazy, and, and he thinks he did it. So, like, y'all, you better, like, find somewhere else to go. <laughs> there's yeah. no witness protection program right now, yeah. but you might want to think of starting one, because... Yeah. <gasps> Too bad I can't <laughs> And Claire's like, oh, no. I have my gun, and I'll be just fine. And she has Rolo, too, and I think Rolo could, like, F a bitch up. No, yeah, okay. I think so too. <laughs> um, so okay, so she loads up. She's got the shotgun. <laughs> up, whatever. It's all good. Back to Willem's Creek. So Murta and Jamie and Ian are catching up, and it's been twelve years since Murta arrived in America, and he was an indentured servant in um, Willem's Creek, and then he the guy died, and he bought the. Um, and then Jamie's like, oh, well, you do sm- silversmithing? Think you can make something from this for me? For And, and Ian's like, yeah, it's for his wife. And Marissa's like, oh, you got another wife. Wasn't huh? that so funny when he's like, Jamie's oh, like, you, like, you married again? And Jamie's like, what? Ian, why don't you go over there and get yourself a drink? Yeah. I loved every second of that scene. I loved Murta's. Uh, reaction to finding out that Claire came back. He was so excited. I know. I know. And I love, I love that they talked about Claire. And again, not, this is not in the books. I love that Merton knows about it. I love, I've never loved that before. It's in the graphic novel. Yeah, but they don't really talk about it. Really, he sees, right, but he, he sees, sees her it, come through. He sees it, but he never really says anything to she, He thinks she was sent by the fairies or something. Right. He knows that she's a traveler. Right. Well, that's a, kind of a spoiler, but I guess not really because it's like from a long time. How's that a spoiler? I guess it's not really. It's just different. But no, I mean, like, I love that Jamie has somebody to talk to about this. That's right. why I love it. Because yeah. it's not like, you know, he can, like, talk to Claire about what, like, it's like. And then he can talk to Murtaugh right. about, like, I don't get this, bro. Like, right. this, this is so weird. Like, people, the girls, like, girls go to university now. Like, how weird is that, really? I mean, I can't right. say that to Claire, because she'll smack me one, but how weird is that, really? You know? I love that. I love, 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 love that Jamie has a confidant about this. Right. Um. So, Jamie wants Marta to come with them. And why wouldn't he? We all do. And Mark's like, well, I have my business, and I don't know if I can leave it, and, you know, whatever. 
And my Jacobites. And, and oh, by the by, I'm totally like Mr. Resist, resist, resistance guy. I'm Freddy resistance. Guy. Resistance guy. And you should come to this meeting. You know, Fo Rupert will be there. All the cool kids are <laughs> So Jamie's like, okay, maybe I will. Uh, we see Claire for about a two seconds and she hears noises and she's got a gun, but it's just the wind. Okay, back to Ellen's group. So it's Murphy's meeting and he is run up the troops. And Jamie's a little bit like, ooh, this is, this is uncomfortable. Yeah, no can do. <laughs> Jamie's like, no can do, Padre. Ain't um, gonna happen. Okay, who else besides me has missed Martez <laughs> Bray? <laughs> now, me, I was just thinking, he, lo- he looks ten times better now. A- after he's been an indentured servant. I know, after he's- and he's gray. He looks a million times better now than he ever did in the be- beginning season. Here is the here is the secret to hair on Outlander. The longer the ponytail, the better the hair. Ian, as another example, has a very long ponytail. Ian's hair is longer than mine, probably longer than yours. Has a long ponytail, looks great, looks totally normal. Jamie <laughs> teeny wee teeny tiny ponytail that's like shorter than my teeny tiny like little finger and it looks dumb as a box of hair jamie's hair looks like you know when like older women will go and get their hair done and teased at the salon like i don't really know what they do to it aunt marie used yes, to do it's that like the hairdo hair. that lasts for a week and you can't get it wet it looks like that, but it looks like he got it wet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now Claire's pointing a gun at uh Oh, at wait, wait, wait. well, Jamie's, Jamie, well, wait, just one that little thing with Marta. Marta wants Jamie to join him, and Jamie's like, I can't, but I'm not going to try to stop you either, so. Jamie's like, I got 10,000 acres, so I just, I'm sorry, I need them. Okay, we're back in the cabin, and Hair Freak has shown up. So here's, here's how this goes down. Knock, 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 knock. I forget if there's a knock. I think there is a knock. And I think Claire might say, who is it, whatever. And the door opens and in walks hair free. Is there not a lock on this door? <laughs> like, 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 really? Like, maybe, Jamie maybe she... spent like four months building this cabin and furnishing it with pottery bar and furniture. <laughs> and didn't ever think to like, maybe make a little bolt for the door. <laughs> I don't. I don't get it. I don't get it either. Because he's a, excuse me. He's creepy McCreep pants. He's so, creepy. Mc, he's creepy McGerman pants. Hair freak. That's what I like to call him. Hair freak. Hair freak comes comes right in, um, and he doesn't believe that you get the measles through germs or whatever. He it was the savages that that brung him because you know they don't believe in God. Those savages. And Claire's like. Oh, it was, I mean, I'm not going to say, or hair freak, that you were the one, but, like, you probably, like, you know, picked it up in Cross Creek and brought it over, whatever, and the, their their resistance was low, and that's why. And hair freak is like, I want you here, here, Clara, uh, Frau Clara, I want you to have this. And Clara's all like... Now, everybody knew. Tell me you didn't know. I mean... No, I didn't you, know, because, and again, oh. this is... This is this actually happens in the book, and yeah. I was like, Shh. I, I fully like, admit I didn't remember, but totally I knew remember. as she was opening it. Oh, thank you, Clara's doll, and I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you knew, you just knew it was going to be. I did out. not know it. I didn't know it. I didn't know it, and I didn't remember it from the book. And it's exactly how it goes down in the book. Um, I mean, I don't think the doll is involved, but, like, yes. He, like, she gets a little wrap package, and it's kind of like, you know, in 2018, if this was a movie, it would be, like, somebody's finger or whatever. Or, you know, maybe the ear It looks like a squirrel's tail. Um, But it is, and I'm sorry. How does she know it's her? Because she's got, like, the little beads or the little... Are still in the hair. Okay. um, Decorations. Um, yes. So she knows it is Dance with Wolves. We don't remember her name. I'm sorry. And then what confounded by this is that her name in the book is different from her name in the show. Because she's, the, the Indian tribe that is the focus of the book is not the Cherokee. Um, I don't, I don't remember what they're called. So, Why? 
It's like, like the it's, Tuscaloosa. It's not the Tuscaloosa. That's like the town in Alabama. I don't know. But, so he's figuring whatever. an eye for an eye. They took his daughter right. and granddaughter. So therefore, he's going to take the, the grandmother. Right. So Clara's like, get out, you free. Um, and then she wraps, and I like how she wraps it in a, like a clean white cloth with a shroud almost. And puts it in the box. What box is that? Is that a significant box? I was flipping out. I was like, I'm sorry. Why are you burning that box? <laughs> That's a like, nice you're box. Like, yeah, I was like, you're in the wilderness. You're going to need that box. <laughs> um, I was really put off by her burning that box. That was a nice box, though. I like. I, I, I thought maybe there was some sort of significance, and I don't know what it was. Where's the rest of her? Perhaps you should stop worrying about burning your good box and this piece of hair and maybe go actually find the woman and bury her. I guess you couldn't live after that, huh? Uh. Uh. After being scalped? Yeah. Yeah. You couldn't live after being scalped. We'll talk about it later. Okay. Okay. Um, because, because, you know, the only Oh my reason- God, it's not this series. <laughs> <laughs> like, what are you talking about? I'm thinking of the wrong Scottish <laughs> dudes in the wilderness series. I'm thinking about those McKinnon brothers series, and that happens to somebody in, oh. Oh, Siri, Siri. Siri wants to talk to me now. <laughs> um, yeah, that happens to somebody in the McKinnon brothers. I think it's McKinnon. So wait, so so you can tell me, do you, can you live by from being scouted? I have no idea because I don't know if that was just like some poetic license or what, but this dude gets scalped and lives in this series, yeah. Um, all right, well, I mean, that's that happens in the book too, and I don't know, I don't think you ever like see her body or what happens with that. Like, well, they anyway. wouldn't have let her bury her anyway. It's very sad and... Um, and then yeah, comes sorry. the Indians and their fire arrows and the Handmaid's Tale. <laughs> See, I was thinking more. I was thinking more. And this is the part where Jason Isaacs rises up and goes, "Burn the church." <laughs> <laughs> and and my, my bodyguard, goes, my bodyguard goes, "Sir, really burn the church." church. <laughs> my bodyguard. <laughs> And uh, what is he on now? That watches the Patriot and, th- and thinks of him as my bodyguard. Really? I do. I totally see him as my bodyguard. <laughs> Go for his nose. When he's in that, I totally see him. And and I should be seeing him as NCIS or whatever the hell he's on now. <laughs> he's on like fourteen of them. You know how there's like what show is he on? I don't even know. But he's he, just, he's and, and it's like bodyguard. it's the one that goes. Doo, doo. Oh, Law and Order. Yeah, he's on like Law and Order, Miami, Law and Order. Oh no, you're thinking of somebody else. You're thinking of um, not Vince Vaughn, but he's like Vince Vaughn esque. Oh, I know exactly who you're thinking of. God, am I doing this again? Or I think it's the wrong guy. He is my bodyguard. No, it's not my bodyguard. I know who you mean. I know exactly who you mean. I'll find it like when we're done. I know exactly who you mean. (laughs) I can see him, and he's very Vince. It's like if Vince Vaughn and my bodyguard had a baby, it would be this guy. (laughs) And then they can't think of his name, but I know exactly who you mean. Ugh! Oh. I would Google, I would IMDb it right now, but Lawn Order, so many friggin' Lawn Orders that it would be there all day looking for the guy's name. So, anyway, uh, the Indians the come Indians and light up the house. Come, they light up the, the arrows. Boy, and the Germans have glass too in their in their ha- in their little cabin. Like, where are you guys getting all the like expensive glass from? But anyway, okay. Um, and you know the the nice the nice German woman comes out and she kind of staggers out and then she falls and she's been kicked with an arrow. And then Air Freak comes home, sees what's happened, and then he meets his end as well. Um, so what do we think of all of this? I think I want to date Murtaugh. <laughs> I'm looking at the scene where he, where are you right now? I'm not, I'm still. That, I, they, that the Indians, that they burn down the house. So. Um, I think it's, it's going to go round and round and it's never going to stop until you stop and chit chat and say, hey, Harvard Indian, let's have a chat. I think that the 
you know, we're forever through this season and possibly far the further are going to be reminded that the people during that time, I'm not going to say we, because my people weren't here. Your, our people weren't here then, but they, they came and they set up camp and they didn't give a rat's ass about the Indians already lived there. They right. just came and, and, and it was, um, uh, what was I going to say? You know, it was, it was majority rules. Sorry, later. And it's, you know, now that we're more civilized, I guess, I don't know, like we can sit back and look at it and go like, ew, like what? These guys were here long before you. Why do you think this is your property? Who do you, that's what I want to know. Where did he get it from? Tryon? Did he get, does everybody get their land from Tryon? Every, well, Tryon grants the land. He, okay, he, so how come these people aren't being taxed the hell right off their own land? Oh, the Germans? You know, that's a very good question. My guess is that the Germans are not on Jamie's land. That they're on some other land. No, I, it is. That's what I'm saying. And how do they get it? And why aren't, why can they stay? Why aren't they being taxed so badly that they have to leave and give their land uh, back? I, I, I don't know. I haven't really looked into that. I mean, what I'm asking right now is we're, we're seeing a more violent um, conflict between the Indians and the settlers in the show than we did in the books. Um, in the books, it, Mueller is still like air freak in the books and and blames Indians for the measles and, and scalps, um, dances with wolves, because, you know, he just does. But I don't really remember, and people can correct me if I'm wrong, that I don't really remember a lot of violence in this manner in the book or not. So it's definitely, like, like, like leading to some sort of a conflict that we didn't necessarily see in the books, but I could be completely making that up because I, because again, I don't, I don't remember this book nearly as much as I do Outlander or Voyager where I know. Like, I, I don't know. You know. I don't know. But it's, I mean, clearly it's leading to something and clearly it's going to come to a head. And, I thought it was leading to their house being burned down. <laughs> well, and there, cause the German house looks a lot like Claire's house. And I was like, wait, are they, what, what? What? But it what? also shows you that they respect, meaning the Indians, like um, power and physical strength. And you know what I mean? Like they respect Jamie because he killed a bear. Oh, right. Yeah, well, that's the only reason that they left the Mullers alone the first time is that, you know, oh, it's um, wife of bear killer. Right. And, you know, we're going to, then your friends, your friends. You know, you hang with Dances with Wolves, so you're cool. So we're going to, like, leave you alone. Right. Um, okay. We're, we're at the home stretch here. Let's let's wrap this up. So Good. Jamie comes home. They have, like, a very touching scene. Claire's like, you know, Jamie, just hold me. Um, Never go away again. <laughs> um, and you, always wear the tricord. <laughs> always wear the tricord. Even when you have nothing else on. <laughs> Don't come to my bed unless you've donned the tricorn. <laughs> Let's write a song, Don the Tricorn. Um, and so Claire's out in the yard the next day. And she hears somebody whistling. And they're whistling. I believe they're whistling. Oh, you over here, boy. She turns around and goes, Oh! It's like when the two of them were singing for their supper. Now, which one did you cry harder at? Oh, I way harder at Jamie and Mert. I mean, I this is great, and I'm crying more about the fact that he. Wow, I just, I'm still blown away. I mean, holy cow, he's better looking than Dougal. In some ways, I cried more when he saw Claire. And again, and maybe maybe the reason was is that they went all the way back to season one. They went all the way back. And I, and maybe another reason is that I'm probably one of only two or three people that really liked that that episode where Claire and Marta were sort of like a, a little like team of trying the to find Jamie, act the vaudeville act trying of to singing for their like supper. I really liked that episode, um, and I know a lot of people didn't. So I think that sort of hearkening back to that to that time period and that relationship just made me like I mean I knew I knew I was gonna how I was gonna be affected by the Jamie and Martha reunion. I didn't really realize as much 
how special Murtaugh and Claire's relationship was. And oh, yes. Yeah. How I had missed it. I think so. I think in some ways, I almost had a stronger reaction to seeing them um, reunited. That's nice. I didn't. I mean, I thought it was lovely, but I, I, I liked when he went. And like she turned around like and, and she's also after a whole episode of her being alone and feeling like she's on Cold Mountain waiting for. <laughs> Have you ever seen that movie? Yes. Oh, do you not love it? I mean, I, people will be like, oh, there will be at least 10 comments where I'm like, that book is so much better. How can you like that movie? I love um, Cold Mountain. Sue me. I, love I didn't read the book, but I, I saw the movie. I really liked it a lot. But, um, what? Where'd you go? What? Me? I can't. You can't. Oh, yeah, there you are. Can you see me? Now I can hear can you. Can you see me? Whatever you just said, I didn't hear. The one last if thing you just said. one thing I hate, it's a frog. It's a frog and rooster. Um, but wait, I was saying something. I think Back she's, like, so relieved. Like, not only is are Jamie and Ian back after my long-ass week, uh, week or weekend, however long it was, of feeding the pigs... And, and knitting, um, but not that there's anything wrong with knitting. I'm just saying, if you had nothing else to do for like a week and a half, you might get sick of it too, even if you're the biggest knitter on the planet. Um, she's like, and now I get Murtaugh back too. I just thought and, of this. Like, didn't Jamie tell her? He did. She mentioned it. She said, oh, Jamie didn't say you were coming or something uh, like that. Right, 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 right. Yeah, so she's that. expecting okay. him. She wasn't but, expecting him, but she knew he was. She knew he was yeah, there. Okay. Yeah, she's. She knows he's alive. Okay. She knows he's there, but she. So no, she's not expecting him, but she's expecting to see him at some point. Right. Okay. So okay. I just thought that was fantastic, and then we have Bree at, at the, the stones. standing stone, and, and I am sorry. I'm like, finally, look. Her hair looked fantastic. Yeah, her hair looked good in the last episode, too. Actually. Oh, my God. I was just so happy we were getting away from... You know, while we had to take the little break earlier, I watched that Kevin Smith video, and I think this is the very first time that I heard Toby Skelton speak in her real accent. And it is like... It is like hearing friggin' Brody talk in the real accent. I or think... hearing, like, Matthew Reese from The Americans talk in his real accent. Like, you want to feel like you are tripping, you just listen to that, and you're just like... I have seen her in something else, but I'm going, did she play an American in that? Like, I can't remember if she did her own accent or if she was playing an American or what. I don't Any, know. I anyway, don't know, I can't remember what the movie was. Anyway. Well, look that um, up because it was fun to watch Kevin Smith interview them. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> that was like a fire alarm. What? Um, so she's reading the letter. Well, I'm really freaked out because they keep going back to now. They go to the stones and it's always the same. But like when we went, we went to Clava Cairns when I was in Scotland, which is where it's technically supposed to be location wise. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Like in relation to Culloden and stuff. And, you know, which is just so cool. So then they show that I'm torn. I'm torn between what I saw and was this so this is the first time you saw stones since you were there since i was in scotland yes yes yes, yes. this gives you a yeah. whole new perspective yeah so anyway looking very forward to seeing what's going to happen with Bree. well that was and that was very cool how they shot it too where you hear the um you hear her the, the letter to roger it's like um you know if i haven't come back yet <laughs> well yeah, Sorry. and like what you said before, it was just, she's so blasé. She's so like. I really did care about you, Roger, but... in my own way. <laughs> I, I and really... girls, ladies, come on. When we're like, we really did care about you. Did you really care? <laughs> I really wanted to be with you, Roger, on a bus to a Yankee game. <laughs> like I, she just was like, I really did care. I did care about you for like a few minutes, and. <laughs> Um, I really wish you luck in your time period and all the later. best to you. Yes. No, just best. 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 Really. <laughs> no, it would be like best uh, um, a hyphen B. No, like your new, like your new fave, like your new one. Talk soon.
<laughs> oh, where'd you go? I'm where'd here, you go? There you are. Did you hear I'm me? Here, I'm here. Yes, I can hear you. You froze for a minute. Did, did you hear me? Yeah. Talk soon. Talk soon. Now, best is when you're like letting someone down. Not letting them down, but you're like, yeah, you know, it's like a formal. You want to be formal. You want to be nice, but formal. Yes. Or it's when you have nothing else to freaking say. To <laughs> say. Best. Oh my god! So that's what that's what that letter was to me with her. Oh my god! But I did like I just, how I just I just thought like I don't remember her not being into him. It seems like she's not even into him at all. I think she's more into him in the book than she is, and I finished this up so I won't have to drink from me. Um, I think she's more into. I him think we're in the done. Books. I don't think you need to Dude. drink anything. Okay. I do I, like this drinking game of like every time we say in the books, drink. It's very funny. Um, no, well, I was gonna say see you next time. you're like you're you're just you're like this tonight. You, I, I you, normally you're the one that's like uh 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 uh, but I feel like it's me tonight. I wanted to say that I just thought it was very cool how they cut it, like where she's reading the letter and they're cutting between her and him, and her and him, and her and him, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then how they did it where like. You saw, like, you saw her start, like, going towards the stones like this, and then they went around the stones with the camera, and then she was gone. He's gone! Oh, he's gone! Now. And that was it. I was interested in what she was wearing. Well, it was no clearer made bat suit made in an evening, that's for sure. Um, no, that's not really where I was going with that, but. Where are we going with that? Well, it's kind of a spoiler if it happens next week. I don't remember anything about like her clothes. All right, you guys, we're going to sign off in seconds. So if you haven't seen, read the books, then we love you guys. Go comment. We'll talk to you later. Okay. <laughs> Best. <laughs> Excuse me. Spoiler alert. Okay. You've been warned. You've been warned. You have been warned. Five, spoiler, three, five, three, four, three, two, one. What about the pants? Didn't she go through in the pants? No. She, she, I swear she went through in pants. No, she she through wore pants. pants. She wore pants. She had pants on when she met Jamie. Okay. You are missing a chunk. She went through in the. I think she went through in a dress. At some point, she got pants and maybe passed for okay. a guy. Okay. Like okay. She's on the you ship. do have to cut this because yeah, I, I just said something. That, okay, and I'm gonna. Yeah. I gotta go. All right, but let, well, let's. All right, so we're back. Hang on. We're back, but we are. Got We gotta go. We gotta. This is probably the yeah, longest. Yeah. Carol, right did now. you love? Did you love this episode? Is this the best yes. one so far? Loved it, you guys. All right. This love the best you guys. One so far. Um, Comment everywhere, and I. Please, please wait for me. Um, uh, YouTube, Facebook, the blog, Twitter, all the usual spots. It's only the blog. That's so 1998. Like, MyOutlanderPurgatory.com. I know, but we get, we get, um, the website. The, site. the okay. website. The website. The website. You guys, the, you go guys. Go on the website. There's changes coming to that website, too. I just want you guys to know that. But Ooh, there are changes say. coming, and we might enlist your help. So, that's okay. Um, okay. Love you guys. Um, We'll see you next week. See you next week. Enjoy. Uh, Have a great week, and we will see you soon. Bye.